All right. So, yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. Awesome. Um, yeah. So we just met a few weeks ago, I guess, right? Uh, yeah. On face yes. on Facebook. Yes. And we found out that we're doing exactly the same work, but then slightly different. Um, and uh, we did a session on each other with energetic surgery. And we got so uh, inspired and full of uh, ideas and like breakthroughs and insights that we were like, oh my God, we should do a life together and talk about this because this is yeah. really big. Yeah. It's big news. Yeah. Um, so I think it would be great if we first start with sharing our story of where we come from and uh, what we do, right? So that people have a little bit of an idea of like what we're talking about because energetic surgery can be like, okay, sounds amazing, but what the actual fuck is, is it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and how did yeah. you become an energetic surgeon? Because where, yeah, did you learn that somewhere or, yeah. Yeah. And can people comment too if they wanna, yeah questions. sure oh of, yeah. Course, of course yeah like please interact yes yeah, please interact yeah. yeah yeah they'll probably have lots of questions i imagine <laughs> i know i would if i was just hearing about this for the first time mm -hmm. yeah 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 so so what is what is yours i was going to interview each other like what is your story like you like you were just a normal person and then you like like how did this start <laughs> yeah kind of <laughs> like i was just a normal person <laughs> and then um i for me it started like just before i turned 28 which i like afterwards learned that that's uh connected to uh, the cycle of saturn that is like a 28 cycle and so when you turn 28 saturn is on the right the same space as uh the same spot as when you were born and then if things are not like in alignment with your life, then Saturn can be like really like very grounded and pushy and disciplined and like, yeah, have like a strong energy and kind of like that, that happened for me as if I like, I, I had so much trauma in my system that I did not even know of because it was so traumatic that it was completely in my subconscious that I did not know I had it which had given like this whole like, you know, protection mechanism, uh, the, which I did not even know I had because I did not know I had the trauma. Uh, that was kind of like when yeah. Saturn came was like trying to tell me something of like, you have to break through that. So I, I it, it started with um, that my arms for, uh, started moving around by themselves after I got hypnotized and got in a time loop. Um, oh, I didn't know you got hypnotized and then it happened. Yeah, I, I got yeah. hypnotized and uh, on a festival and I had like this quarter of acid because I was at a festival and I got hypnotized by accident and I got like sucked into the show. And then um, I started wow. seeing energies and I started understanding the energy world and um i had this time travel experience where i met my um my younger self of around the trauma my trauma that happened around four my uh, when i was four and i was going into a childhood memory where i was four playing with my imaginary friend and then i as a 20 almost 28 grown-up adult turned out to be the imaginary friend I had when I was four because I was a, I was at a festival so I had like feathers in my hair and like beautiful clothes and I looked oh like this magical creature wow. and that was exactly the image I always had from my imaginary friend so I had this like time loop warp like time traveling loop That's insane. Uh, which was absolutely insane and that like broke something open in my mind that yeah. I started like seeing energy and my arms started to move around on energy, which I did not know what it was. So I was like, oh, my arms start moving around by themselves. What the fuck is this? <laughs> Were you at the festival when that happened? 
what like that was happening all at the festival no i like days yeah. after like right. like like days weeks after months after and wow. i and and um yeah like the friends i had back then they were also like well, I don't know, like, what the fuck, uh, super weird. And then I started getting like possessed during the night. Like I woke up, like my arms doing all these things and I'm doing like rituals in my bed and waking up in like a uh, bridge, full bridge pose. And I like felt I was in this like exorcist movie. Was it scary? It was super scary. I was yeah. like scared as shit <laughs> because I thought I'm, I'm going crazy. I'm losing my mind. I'm going crazy and no one can help me. No one understands this. And I went to the doctor and said, yeah, my arms move around during the night <laughs> and I have this and I have that. And, and the doctor says, um, arms moving around in the night um if this then that uh yeah that must be carpal tunnel syndrome or something because i'm That's an like artist the most mad hilarious thing i've ever heard <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and like i and carpal i carpal tunnel syndrome <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> which is something like that that uh, artists and 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 waitresses have it because that they used this I too much and then bit. And yeah. then you get like your your muscles get strong like thicker and then you get yeah. like yeah a jam up there um but uh yeah i also wanted to do an mri scan of my brain because i thought i i'm going nuts right i'm going crazy and have maybe i have this tumor in my head so i went through this whole hospital doctor thing and i was felt like i'm just like this you know number in like this where like like if this then that's ta, ta, ta. and yeah. no one was really listening to me no one was really like caring about me like yeah. and I was like what is what the fuck is this shit so I and so I felt really alone I felt really scared I felt like no one could help me and I started traveling the world wow. to look for answers um and then and then i met several uh, witches and wizards and had like a lot of fucking weird experiences with like you know like really like wizards with like uh, uh, gandalf or dumbledore looking wizards with a long white beard that came to me and started like mom doing with me and i was like what the fuck is this shit and then i found out that that was also like an energy taking energy because they were like old men and they could see that I was like open. Oh. Uh, so they just took my energy and then I fell asleep. And then I met another oh, one of what kind of, uh, what kind of was that in? Were you found wizards? Well, I found them all for ever everywhere. Like I went to uh, California, South Africa. Uh, in Germany, um, I went to Japan, I went to Australia and Egypt and um, Indonesia. And I, I, f I found these wizard guys like everywhere and they all did the same thing until I, wow. uh, until I understood what they did and it was taking my energy. And then I did the thing back and then this guy fell asleep. <laughs> Yeah. So I and I had many of these kind of experiences that was like, okay, how what the fuck? How does this work? Um that, that like and, blows my mind that these wizard guys, like I've never even heard of that, but like they exist everywhere and they're the same. What? Yeah, like, like, yeah I know. Where do they live? Do they're all they're all hidden in the woods, you know, like witches in the, in the woods? woods, like yeah, or like hidden in like this Harry Potter like thing like you never no one knows if you only know then it's uh, suddenly there you know like yes, this <laughs> sounds like magical yeah it, it is and it's 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 real were you scared uh, well I have been scared uh sometimes yeah but I also got help like it's like the hero's journey yes. right uh of yeah, yeah you're, you're looking for hmm? the answers that blows my mind that blows my yeah. mind. Yeah. What do you guys yeah, think? I'm, I'm kind of like, what? There are wizards that are in the woods. Like what? Oh, wow. Yeah. I believe yeah. you. I'm just like, I'm like yeah. what? 
Are they like Hermes? <laughs> Who are they? Yeah. Do they speak English? Yeah, yeah, they speak English. Yeah. Oh, they're yeah. Like, okay. Yeah, yeah. And uh, they, they're, they're just, just like really into energy. They're what? Yeah, they're just, they're magicians. Wow. Like, like real wizards. And, okay. and they, they, can, they manipulate energy. Uh, are they so good or are they like... Kind of you have yeah i mean depending on like how they feel i guess right that's true <laughs> so and then i'm I met I have a quick witch. question for you can i just yeah. ask you i'm just enjoying yeah. talking to you do you think we're witches uh yeah i i call myself uh, more a wizard than a witch hmm. uh, i just i feel more uh i i, I uh resonate with that more because I, I, I distinguish a bit like a witch works with like herbs and things of the earth and mm. a wizard works with the stars and with, uh, with the planets. So that's yeah. like the earthly and the heavenly realms. Uh, yeah. And then they kind of work together. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, our, uh, what's yeah. the difference? Yeah. What's uh, the difference? Yeah. 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 That's super cool. Thank yeah. You so much. Um, yeah. So yeah. What happened after... So you went on and this then, journey. Yeah, and then and then I went and then I met this witch also like in the living in the woods and uh, which was also a funny story because Experience. I I, I, also, I uh, <laughs> yeah and it, it really like Quite shows nice. how how manifestation works because um, mm -hmm. I also I, I make dresses and costumes I really like sewing and but you can't really travel with a sewing machine because it's way too heavy so but i had all this like beautiful fabric i was in south africa and i wanted to make a dress and then i so i found this witch in the woods and she was like good i'm happy you're here i hope you know how to sew because i have a sewing machine and an overlock machine and i don't know how they work and i want to learn how to sew so i manifested someone who can teach me <laughs> And I was like, okay, well, well, I manifested uh, someone who can tell me what the fuck is happening with my arms. Right. And oh and and what then she's South Africa. Oh wow. Yeah. And then wow. she told she told me, oh, you're just changing the ether. And I was like, okay, what the fuck is the ether? <laughs> <laughs> yeah so i and long story short so i went on this like really deep journey um and also had like big shadows coming up that i had like pff, it's been it's such an insane crazy deep journey where yeah. i had to learn a lot about okay so how then because i saw my arms transform into like machine parts and clicking in like cosmic machines and opening portals and i'm like whoa what the it was so intense and scary and i like some i opened the dark portal as well uh by accident um and i did not know i had this trauma i had to figure this all out so i've been on a super crazy deep journey uh wow. meeting the right people meeting the right shamans and and wizards really that have helped me uh figure out what was going on in my system and then um, yeah, I found out I had this like really big childhood trauma um, and um, which is like, you know, the, uh, the uh, archetype or the, um, your soul contract as a wounded healer that mm -hmm. you have like a shaman also has, like you have like this really big wound, childhood wound. And that and that opens up something in your system so that you connect very deep to the spirit world. So this is oh, a that's very, cool. So it, like it, a, the wound actually opens you up. To yeah. So the, the wound is necessary to become the healer, and they and they work together. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Because you so, seek help, right? You need help so much for yourself yeah, that you like, exactly that happens yeah. too. Yeah. And yeah. so anybody watching, like, if you have wounds and traumas, um, you know, Makai and I, you'd probably tell me if you agree, but it's like, I think we, we obviously have um, talents, but it's like, um, we're all, for me, we're all just spirits. So I think anybody, even if they, anybody watching has traumas, like you definitely have your own connection to the energy world. And that's sort of like a blessing in disguise, right? Um, yeah absolutely it has like for you to like, grow and to learn yeah 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 and everything yeah. is made out of energy so aurora asks have you ever thought of writing a book 
I'd love to know more. So we are, so I'm an artist, so I paint. Uh, so on my website, you can find uh, some paintings that I made uh, uh, along my journey. And I have been thinking of maybe also writing a, a, a like a book that is connected to the paintings, but I'm also writing like uh, blog posts that are connected um, to these paintings that are that are showing different parts of my journey. Yeah, it's healing the trauma and, and healing the trauma is is it's not like trying to get rid of the trauma, but trying to integrate it because it is part it's part of the journey. It's part of your gifts, like in the trauma, you get your gifts. And that's such a different way of seeing healing, because otherwise you keep chasing, trying to fix things. Uh, and then you're always like, I'm not good enough. I'm not good enough. I have to fix. I have to fix. And if you integrate the wound, it's like I'm already good enough because the wound is part of me. And I, I just I'm seeking for tools to help integrate that so that I can receive the gifts from it. It's a different kind of a different kind of energy. Yeah. So, yeah, I so I, I learned a lot from all these people that coming on my path and little by little, the more I felt through my trauma, um, and the more I learned about, like, I really had to work with my left brain. I had to like combine the right and the left brain together to understand what the energy world was trying to tell me and how it worked. And that's when I started like doing this. Uh, I found out that my arms can transform into all these like different energetic tools. Mm -hmm. So this is the good stuff, you guys. This is the where she found her what she can do and it's incredible yeah. it's like it's just, like i've never heard anything like this so even i don't do it quite the way you do it so yeah so, yeah Tell us. so so that i so my so i'm like i have this like steampunk gear cog machine like energy that other people and sh shamans could see in me as well without like you know of me telling them and it's like my arms can transform in all these like machine parts or like tools. And that's how I do surgery. So yeah. I go, so I go into um, the energetic field. I, I tune in in your field. And then I start seeing like entities and blocked uh, energy. And then I can, my arms just transform in like all these different tools to like make it loose or get it out or sometimes like today for example i had um i had like someone who had this whole thing around uh his heart and i and it was like very you know it can be like very vulnerable and it's like very precise work to get like the right holes in there and then and then at one point it was like <laughs> and then i could scrap it out and then the heart was free again so sometimes it can be very delicate precise work um to just open up because we've all this uh with life happening and with all all the things in our system we just have all these like you know blocks or things or or, or layers of skins or overlays or masks on top of our body uh, that doesn't serve us anymore. And so what I would do with, with, with this is like really clearing up your whole energetic field of all these things that are not necessary anymore and clear up so that you become like a very clear channel from source to the uh, primal crystals of the earth. So you ground really in the earth and you go high up so that like I always say, like your body is a um, electric, um, like an electronic um, device, and you have a, a, a plus and a minus, and the and, and all your organs and other things is like electricity. It's like electricity going in all these different forms and ways. It's um the audio is getting a little bit fuzzy. Is that can you hear that? I just want to. Oh, yeah. yeah sounds great to us. we can still hear you but it's a little bit uh just like staticky yeah 
do you still have still, have, still like that? Yeah, it was it was um it was uh, is my audio okay, you guys? Maybe it's my time to talk. <laughs> yeah, yeah. My audio is okay. Okay, give me one. Just give me one. Um, thank you. Okay. Um. Okay. So um. That's okay. But this, I just want to say that this happens a lot with technology and um. Energy work, like. You know, I find sometimes I'll try to get on calls with my clients and like things go insane. And like, it's, it's sort of, I don't know exactly. It, sometimes I think that things try to interfere so that, cause what we're saying is like important or what we're doing is so important. So it's actually like, yeah, a compliment really. Um, but yeah. <laughs> I hope it's it's like it's 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 the uh, 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 electronic devices are very really easy to get energy in. So, so that's why uh, entities and devices can easily yeah. work through. Oh, you must be so powerful. So, it's just like we can't hear as well now. But anyway, I hopefully it, it um will. Anyway, we're we're rolling with <laughs> rolling with the punches today. Um. So yeah, my, my, um, so that's how you got to do your work and you do it so precisely and you're so, um, you're so specific about it. And, um, I really admire that cause I'm, I'm getting into that now where I can actually feel the energy. Can you feel it when you work like physically? Yeah. 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 And, um, I'm starting to hear it. So like energy is real and the energy world is real and, um, Okay, so my story is uh, quite different, even though we do like something so the same. Um, you work in a different way. Like I don't have robotic arms um, at all, but, um, and like the machinery I think is so cool. That's like your, your version of it. I love it. Um, mine is like, I was, um, I was really sensitive. I, I wasn't like a, psychic I don't think I wouldn't have said that about myself but I used to kind of maybe you guys can relate to as a kid I used to be like am I kind of psychic like I would be able to guess um, my friends would think of a number between one and ten and I would be able to like pretty much guess it or be like one off and it was kind of like a cool little trick I could do um but other than that I was like I'm pretty normal and um you know did all the normal kid stuff um was definitely pretty sensitive though and um, I noticed that I kind of had, in, by the time I was like 13, I noticed I kind of had influence um, with things like my energy could just kind of like get really big and kind of powerful. And um, my trauma, like I had a trauma when I was 13, my Paya, um, cause I had my first boyfriend and he dumped me. And um, when he did, I turned around and I walked away and like everybody followed me. And it was the strangest thing. Like I've never seen anything like that. Like, like a bunch of just kids, just like a parade, like following me. Um, so my energy was really powerful. I could kind of like draw in a lot or something. It, like I didn't understand it. Um, and I noticed that like the things I thought I had kind of a lot of influence. So I kind of played around with that. I didn't really understand it. And um, then I, I went through a really hard time again when I was 19. So the numbers of the ages, I think probably mean something. But um, when I was 19, a really, really hard time. I had depression, anxiety, really bad. Um, I just kind of felt like giving up. Like I just went through a lot, um, was bullied and stuff. And um, I think that all these wounds, um, again, like they, they, they help you because I know what all those things are like to work with people now. So like I went through a lot of things and, um, you know, overcame them. And one of the biggest things I went through was having Lyme disease. So I had chronic Lyme disease and it was undiagnosed. And, um, so my body was basically dying and all again, like you, like I went to all these doctors for two years straight. That's all I did. And, um, I couldn't do anything. Like, I just thought that I didn't have any energy. 
and I couldn't go to school or work. And like, I just went to doctor after doctor and no one could help me. Like they were just all like, yeah, like eat well and exercise. And I was like, okay, <laughs> like I'm really not okay, you know? And Lyme disease like is like a bacteria that like is eating your brain. So like you can imagine like how insanely hard that was. And um, I didn't have like any medicine or anything. I knew how to make it better. And um, my, like I grew up Catholic. So my story is pretty like, I guess religious sort of in a way. Um, but I, I basically like really connected to the story of um, this saint in Poland who um, saw Jesus and he appeared to her. And her name is St. Faustina. And she wrote a diary um, in the 1930s. And he asked her to paint a picture of him. And it's called the Divine Mercy. And so my mom at that time, it was just a really stressful time. And she got like a gigantic poster of it. <laughs> and she put it in our kitchen. And it was just like this like thing that my brothers made fun of. And like, it was just like, why do we have this gigantic picture of Jesus? But um, I read that diary and it really helped me because I felt like even in the Bible, he doesn't, you don't really hear from him directly. And in that diary, um, he says things directly to her. So you get to hear him. And so I would like highlight the things he said and try to learn from it. Cause I was just trying to fix my life. Like I didn't know what to do, you know, and no one that I went to could help me. So I was kind of like you, but in a different way. Like I was like, I really need answers, but like, I just, I'm looking and looking and looking. And so I was just like, well, I know Jesus can probably help. Right. So, um, so even though I grew up religious, I had this whole new like connection with him. Um, cause it was so real. I felt like my life was on the line, which it was. And, um, but I didn't know it at the time. And then, uh, it just got to the point where I got so kind of broken down that, um, you know, not having any help and not knowing how to get better and not feeling better that I just like kneeled in front of that poster and cried one night. And I just was like, I can't do this. Like, I you really need to help me. And, um, like, I just, I don't know what to do, you know? And I, I just asking, please help me. And, um, after that, everything changed. And I also, when I was doing that, which I think is kind of important for people to hear is that I kind of like did surrender. Like I was like, maybe I have to feel this bad the rest of my life. And if that is true, I still choose to live. You know, I still want to live. I don't, I don't know what's happening, but I know that I, if I have to feel like this and I can't find an answer, fine. You know, I'll just keep going with the best I can. And I think that really changed something because it ended the struggle. It was just like, I'm going to be fearless no matter what, you know? even if I feel like this, I'm going to be fearless and live my life the best I can with these conditions. And I actually took the poster and put it above my bed. Cause I was like, I really believe you're going to help me. And so that was like something kind of switched in my brain. And I've heard that the pineal gland opens up when you choose to live, when you're actually in a life or death situation and you like choose yeah. to live. And I, I didn't even know I was in a life or death situation, even though, cause none of the doctors told me, but it's like, if your body's dying, like in some level, you know, right. So I felt like I was nine years old. Like I couldn't even like barely go anywhere. So like, um, so it was a lot mentally and physically, cause I didn't know I was sick, but I really was. And I wasn't being told I was sick and I, anyway. So, um, yeah. And then my family not understanding, it's just, I had not no answer. Right. And I didn't understand myself. And so it's like, I really had to have faith. And so, um, I believe that when I made that choice, like, you know, I'm going to live anyway, um, that my penile gland opened up and all of a sudden I started being able to, not only did I get a diagnosis luckily after that, and I went on a whole journey of like healing, but, um, I, I started to be able to like, I had glimpses of the future. <laughs> so I started to be able to like see the future and I was just didn't know what was happening. And then I kind of pieced it together. And I was like, 
I'm actually able to like read energy. Like I can feel like the energy of people and things. And like, even if they're not beside me, I can kind of like tap into it and like translate it and feel it. And so I got this ability to like read it. And then I started doing readings for people because um, I was like, I guess I'm psychic now. So I like, I would do calls like a psychic with people. Um, and um, I was in journalism school and I kind of did that secretly a little bit like on the side and I would get paid for it. <laughs> it was pretty cool. Um, and I didn't, I didn't understand it, but like they, I could connect people to their past loved ones who had passed and tell them messages. And like, I, it was just this thing that I did. And I was like, I don't understand, but I guess I can do this. But um, I noticed that it, it didn't always like help them is the thing. <laughs> like, I, like they, they, they got a lot out of it, but like, I felt like I could tell them what was wrong, but I didn't know how to fix it, you know? And so I kind of stopped doing it because I was like, I don't know if it's really helping people um, the way I want to help people. And I just kept living my life, but um, was pretty unhappy with my life because I just felt like I was still looking for what am I supposed to do? And, um, and then I went through this really intense period, like 2019 till now, where I didn't know it was happening, but I started, I got past life therapy and then I, um, so I was still seeking like answers, you know, and I got past life therapy, found about my past lives, which there are like a bunch. One of them is a priest <laughs> and, um, of course, and, um, I, like, oh my God, I just like my whole life changed. I started meeting people from my past lives and then it would like activate something in me and like my soul would like learn something. So Aurora said something about learning, like definitely your soul is here to learn. So like I, I started learning all these things and I'd wake up in the morning and my eyes would be like kind of dark. And I like, it's like, I felt like dark energy was coming out of me like every day. It was just more and more kind of like, I was getting cleansed or something and I didn't understand it. And I kept getting more and more glimpses of like the future. And like, I called it like deja vu, but it was really like seeing my life, but from the bigger picture. And I started to see like all these things that I didn't understand. Like I would be doing normal things to me, like chatting with my friend about guys or something on Facebook. And then I would get this glimpse from the bigger picture, like, oh, this isn't good to do. And I actually like, don't do it at all. And I'd be like, what? Like, I'm just doing this. Like, what's the problem here? You know, like, I think we do normal stuff all the time. And we're like, it doesn't matter in the bigger picture, but it did because it was like, not part of the real me. It was like this, like part of my, I don't know. It's like, there, I feel like there's an old me and a new me, but it's literally like the old me is like me with negative energy. And the new me is me clear of negative energy. So it was just saying like, you have to let this go now. So yeah. I had to let like a lot of friends go. I had to tell her, like, I can't talk to you about this. I'm sorry. And people not understanding, like I had to go through all that and just keep trusting. And, um, I went through, I think and I, one, one second, we've got yeah. two minutes, we got two minutes left before okay. we have to restart the zoom. Uh, oh, okay. So, okay. Yeah. I know it's kind of a long story, but, um, in two minutes or one minute, I, what happened was I just, I developed the ability to see negative energy in the chakras and, and I took it out. And what I did when I took it out was took out the trauma. So, or the problem or the symptoms. So like, I, I found out that like, that's what those things are. And my story is just really connected to Jesus because that's like the energy that I use to work now, um, mostly, but um, that's kind of, I guess, a kind of a secretive thing because I'm called the energy queen. You know, I want to keep it for everybody, but that's, that's really what I use a lot. And so that's kind of my method. You know, we have really different methods, but we do like pretty much the same thing, just in different ways. And um, yeah, long story short, like my life totally changed and I'm living like my dream life now. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And so we're going to, we're going to start another session now. And then we talk about 
how it can help you and yes. what the effects are and how it can benefit you and also maybe use it um maybe there are some things that you can like get like really out of this to use for yourself yeah. as well yeah yeah definitely. so stay so stay tuned okay see you see you soon